Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Nye. I really appreciate two things. I've had this on this screen for the past 10 minutes as I've been eating breakfast, getting ready to, uh, getting ready to really start doing this. I noticed two, uh, really three things, actually, looking at this, which, uh, which excites me for the future of Nintendo games, for the future of Switch games, uh, because of the level of detail... And at least one of these details you can literally only see from this camera angle. One of them is the fact that it's raining. Now, I knew that from the Animal Crossing, you know, flyover on the opening screen. But you can hear it in the uh, sounds. Listen to our second. You can hear the rain's falling. But also, if you look at the window, you can see droplets falling down the window which i think is a great touch i i can't think off the top of my head another game where when it's raining you can look at the window and see droplets falling the other uh, a second thing that i've noticed is the standee on the uh um on the counter uh that blue thing the thing that i noticed is not only is there the it's it's built like a standee so as, a, as a retail worker who used to work cash wrap i've built a number of these things and uh, I know how they're built. And so I can see how that one's built. It's got that little crossbar low on. But not only is there the little crossbar, which you'd never see from the front. You'd only ever see it from this camera angle. But also, there's the little slight stick out on the side that you can see. The little triangle side. There's that little slight stick out at the bottom. That's how an actual standee would be built. And you might be able to see that from the front. But it's just this small detail that someone put in to make it look good that you'd only ever see... Well, you might see that from the front, but you'd probably never see it from any other angle, and most people are probably never going to see it. And I love stuff like that. It's fantastic. Uh, there's also... Uh, I'm looking at the tiles on the floor, and it's like one of the tiles, like a slight wear chip on the corner. And just... At least there is discoloration wear on the corner of the tiles in the first place, but just this is stuff that you'd never see in... Uh, if you're not if, if you're not like actively looking for what can I see on this view... So most players are never going to see that. Anyways, right now in Isle Deck Need is 9.44 a.m. on Monday, April 20th. Really no news to speak of today. Did anyone else catch that quiz show on TV yesterday? How do they come up with all those questions each week, let alone all the answers? Oh dear. There I go again prattling on about my personal TV habits. That's all for now. Hope you all have the loveliest of lovely days. Gotta wonder what Nook is looking at on his laptop whenever he's actually sitting at his desk. Okay, we well, gotta go back in the house for a second. Because yesterday, I did a thing that I probably shouldn't have done. I'm probably gonna end up paying for it. Uh, but I went and bought, um... I went and bought turnips. Uh, bought them for a price that's not all that good. Uh, I ended up buying them for, uh, 109. Uh, which is not a particularly good price. Those of you who actually do the turnip game know that 109 is a terrible price. Uh, but it was just the price that happened to be available at the time, and I didn't feel like trying to find my way into someone else's island that was offering a better price. One of my friends did have a price of, like, uh, 90 per turnip, but unfortunately they went to bed before I was able to get down there. Okay. So let's get rid of all these turnips real quick so that way I actually have inventory space and I can actually go do my daily stuff. So yesterday, I uh, spent the majority of my day streaming a game called Lobotomy Corporation. Some of you may have actually been there. I had a lot of viewers, uh, more viewers than I'm actually used to uh, having in the stream lately, uh, which I greatly appreciated. It was kind of nice to have people hanging out. A uh, bunch of people who were talking and watching me uh, screw around. And one of the things that was kind of interesting, kind of in a, uh, a retro... Or not retro... Well, retrospective, yes, but introspective is more the point. Um, in kind of an introspective way, one of the things I noticed is that uh, about myself was the... Uh, how to put it? The perfectionism that came to the fore while playing that game. 
The game is absolutely a lot of fun. It is uh, if you're if you're unfamiliar uh, with Lobotomy Corporation, uh, it is a uh, kind of side view base builder. Well, not so much base builder because you're not really building a base; you're managing a base. So it's got a little bit of those. Um, got a little bit of those feels of of a game like um fallout shelter and uh, oxygen not included if you guys have played either of those uh and the idea is it uh, kind of takes inspiration off of uh off of scp foundation which i ended up talking about yesterday uh these events were related let's see what mail we got today pietro sent me a gift I was trying to say thank you for that excellent birthday gift. It was like a non-fat caramel mocha latte with extra whip and sprinkles for my soul. I hope what I got you makes you feel the same way. Oh, thank you, Pietro. Daisy May uh, gave me some bamboo shoots. Nice. Hook Shopping gave me the tea and the cap, and Peanut has something to say. I saw you in my dreams last night. It was crazy. So tell me, were you there on purpose? I thought maybe you have something important to tell me. Like why you were a huge dancing beetle. Let me know from Peanut. Oh, there you go. What did Pietro give us? A knit hat. I mean, sure. Cool. Okay. Some bamboo shoots. A tea and a plain cap. Okay, we got stuff to give away to, uh, to animals as we kind of wander today. So it's a, it uh, takes uh, inspiration off of uh, SCP in that you have uh, abnormalities, and the idea is you have to send employees to work the abnormalities in order to generate power for your uh, for the corporation, for the city, for, for you know, for the things that you're doing. And uh, different, uh, different abnormalities like different types of interaction. So... I am your good pal. Do you want a thing? I do have something to give you. Here. Please, have knit cap. A knit hat? Yeah. Oh, look, it even fits you. I feel spiffier already. Oh, you're welcome. Moving on. Hey, Peanut. I saw you in your dreams last night. Today is totally a great day. It is. Here, have a thing. For you? Yes. Here, have a plain cap. I am for sure that you can have this. Now nah, it doesn't quite match your shirt, but the colors are, let's say they're perfect, because they are awesome. So you work with the abnormalities, and different abnormalities like different, uh, different actions. And uh, you need them to like them, because if you upset them, bad things can happen, and bad things are probably going to happen. And it was kind of interesting playing last night, because uh, a lot of people were kind of expecting me uh, to fail a fair amount. Um, which, okay, so let's, so let me get this out right now for, for those of you who, uh, you know, who are curious, who, who may, you know, come to my defense for no good reason over that concept. Sup, Chatter? Tired of teaching the same old reactions? Well, you're in luck. It's a random acting lesson time with your host, Chatter. Let's say you want to look self-satisfied, but in a charming movie star kind of way. I got just the thing. Grease up those teeth and get ready to smile wide just like this. You'll find that smirking exudes just the right amount of confidence. Use it well, homage. I learned the smirking reaction. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yep. Yep, that's that's a thing that happened. There's our talk to our neighbors thing, and we get tons of points for that. Neat. You know, there are people who are expecting me to fail, and you know what? In a game like that, I totally get it. And I absolutely understand that people were, you know, why they were expecting me to fail. Because that game, that game ain't easy. You know, that is not a, uh, that is not a game that, uh, that you sit here and you're like, wow, you know, this was a, this is a simple and easy game for me to play. Uh, there were, there were a lot of stuff in there. Now, it took a while for me to get to parts that I consider to be hard. But there were certainly parts of that game that were not, uh, not easy, uh, to play. I don't really want to put it, like, in line with that other one. Let's go ahead and put this here. That'll do. So, yeah, that game wasn't, uh, wasn't actually easy. 
Uh, but what I found is that there's a certain level of perfectionism that started kicking in as I got to the harder sections of the game. Now, I'm very well aware of my, you know, of my perfectionist streaks. So I'm not saying as if this is a surprise to me. You know what? I don't like where this is sitting. Let's move it back one. So I'm not saying perfectionist is if this is a surprise to me. I, you guys have seen my, my willingness to go above and beyond to get, uh, to get what I want. Not only perfectionist. Perfectionist is, you know, certainly a word that describes what I'm talking about, but also stubborn. Uh, I'm willing to, you know, work my butt off to get what I want, but if I don't get what I want, I'm not gonna stop until I do. Uh, and that's, that's pretty, that's pretty consistent of me as a person. I, I really like aiming for what I want to do. And I like doing it my way. What's up, Peanut? Thanks for coming. Are this really coming along? What are you doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Check it out. I'm making a fancy rose wreath. It's a fancy rose wreath. Okay. This is a little bit different from a normal rose wreath. Okay. Let's go ahead and use that. Awesome. What else are you doing? What's new? I got a thing for you. Please, have a t-shirt. A private tea? Privet? Privet tea? Been wanting one like this for a while. Thanks, Highway. You are welcome. Later. But especially as we got into the, the final day I worked on, so day, uh, day 17 or day 18... Uh, which is a a ways into the game. It, we were it was eight hours into the game, seven hours into the game when I got to this point. And day seventeen or eighteen was uh, was no slouch. I had received uh, yeah. We're, we're gonna get rid of that. I don't I don't really like that wave breaker. Do I not have? I mean, I have a bridge right here, but. Uh, so, we received a uh, hard-to-deal-with abnormality. And one of the things with the abnormalities that, uh, you know, you, you need to know if you haven't seen the game, and I will eventually, in case you're curious, I will eventually post uh, post gameplay footage. So, in case you're curious, that will eventually happen. Uh, it's just not going to happen until I beat the game. Um, but uh, abnormalities, you don't know anything about them when you first start working with them when you first get them you're, they're, they're kind of forced upon you so it's not a situation where you can uh really say which abnormality you want or i don't want that one the game gives you a choice of you know a couple of different abnormalities but the choice is based entirely on kind of a uh just a sentence that gives a hint a clue as to what's up with that abnormality what that abnormality does and uh Then you just have to kind of deal with the abnormality, and you don't know what that... This is a chair, apparently. Okay. Welcome to the Casa de Pietro. That's Spanish for Pietro's crib. Yes, it is. I haven't seen that John around here lately. Oh, random person who showed up. Yep. Okay, moving on. Uh, you don't know what they do, so you have to kind of experiment with them and kind of mess with them. And gradually, uh, as, you, as you work with them, you'll get the ability to unlock information about them. So, I had to do a lot of experimentation, and the one I got on the final day I worked on is a total pain in the ass. And blows everything up. You know, just major problem. Sup, Savannah? Here. I'm gonna give you a thing. Yes, I really want to give you a wave breaker. A wave breaker? You really want to give that to me? Oh god, she might actually use it. Been hoping for something like this? Been looking at things like this? Just accents? And a gingham picnic shirt. Okay, so we have something else we can give away now. Pretty sure we've already had a gingham picnic shirt before. Yeah. But what's kind of interesting to me is I'm th this game plays a lot like uh, a lot like XCOM. And what I mean by that is that your uh, your units, your people, are um. Damn, we're just not getting high bell payouts. So your units are 
expendable. They're, they're quite likely to die. And uh, chances are they're going to die. You know, you, you, you've got to kind of accept this as not only a possibility, but a probability. Uh, and I don't like accepting that. Not only is it a loss of a resource, you know, it's a loss of the unit in and of themselves, and units are a, uh, a resource. I think he's home. Yeah. So units are a resource to begin with, but also you're rewarded at the end of any given day for uh, the percentage of units that survive. Sup, Boon? Here, have a shirt. The more, the, uh, it's not just, a, it's not a number, it's a percentage. So the percentage of units that survive, um, hey, good looking. The percentage of units that survive increase the amount of resource you get, basically money, that you get in order to either hire new units or upgrade existing units. So it is a distinctly good thing to not lose units because you're able to either buy new units to fill out your, your ranks... Uh, or you're able to upgrade existing units to get their stats better, which uh, better stats can be kind of important. Uh, stats, um, wow, I really dislike this setup right here. So let's go ahead. There's too many trees right here. What's this tree? So that's pears. Let's go ahead and take the, this pear tree and let's... Uh, that can go here. Okay, we'll we'll look at these. Well, so the big thing. Okay, you know what? It doesn't seem like it's worth it to do ninety thousand bells. I'm just not getting that payout as often. So I think we're just gonna stick with thirty thousand for trees from here on out. Because I'm putting in 9,000, I'm getting 10,000 back. We're losing money. It's not worth it. So let's go ahead and uh, go make our... Go plant our tree here. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it's it's a losing proposition to, to lose a unit. Not only do you lose the unit and you lose whatever... Uh, what you lose what you paid for the unit, you lost the experience the unit gained. Um, that's just a normal tree, right? That's an orange tree. want to keep that. So you lost whatever experience that unit would have gained. Uh, you lost whatever equipment they had on them. So losing a unit is a... Um, it's an incredibly like, high loss proposition uh, to lose a unit that way. Now, unlike XCOM, uh, Lobotomy Corporation does kind of encourage you to reset if you are, if you find yourself in a bad way. Uh, there is a daily reset function, and then there's also, like, a chapter reset function. Uh, so you can reset to a previous chapter and, uh, you know, try again. And I found myself using that a lot because... The new, uh, the new abnormality I had is a total pain in the ass that basically wants to kill everything and was causing me some pretty major issues, especially in just learning how she works, learning how you operate. Uh, it's it's uh, one of the magical girls for one of you, or for any of you that have played Lobotomy Corporation. It gets you curious what abnormality I was dealing with. It's one of the magical girls. Um, so total, uh, total pain in the ass. And uh, I found myself with a strategy that, as far as I am concerned, the strategy I came up with is a working strategy. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a shot in the dark. It's not a, uh, it's not a hopeful thing that will not pan out. Um, I have a roaming gank squad of high level, uh, high level employees who can go and beat the shit out of her if she happens to, uh, if she happens to teleport. But it's a very, um, it's a very micromanagey thing, because I have to have them separate from everybody else, and then, uh, I also have to keep an eye out for what she's doing. Uh, if she decides to do her super, I'm a charge in my laser, I have to get out of the way of that. And she also has a passive aura of death and destruction and mayhem around her. 
So I have to make sure I'm keeping an eye on my unit's health and have them leave. And uh, she also has a habit of teleporting around. And when she teleports around, she may just happen to kill low-level employees. So I was trying to make this strategy work. And I ended up resetting probably ten times over the course of an hour and a half. Definitely the more reset, most resets I've had at any point in that game. I ended up resetting a lot. And it wasn't until later on that I kind of thought about how I was trying to be perfect. How, you know... Oh, okay, Nook's Cranny. Okay, so we have... Oh, you know what? I didn't buy the stuff from yesterday. Rotary phone. Throwback skull radio. Does it have a... It's a CD. Okay. I love that it's a brain on that CD. Grab the wall mount candle. And you know what? I'm gonna grab the uh, the garden faucet. We're just gonna give it away to someone. Let's see if we can continue trying to upgrade the boys. Okay, turn up prices. Fifty nine. Holy crap, dude! Why do you hate me? Okay. Let's go ahead and sell. Let's see. That. That, that, that. That. That, that, that. Those. That. Let's see what I want to do with the bamboo shoots. I might plant them. Hold on to the oranges in case I have to do any relocations of uh, stuff. So it's definitely a um, definitely an interesting thing to just see see myself working so hard to pass this day with you know one or fewer uh, deaths. I think I I think I finished the day with one death, but it definitely feel it's definitely one of those like optimal situations. You know, obviously you don't want deaths. You don't want to lose all of these resources um, because some of them are hard to get back. Like the the money that you pay to get a uh, employee can only be gotten by beating a day. And, uh, in the other, and the, the gear you can get by just working the, uh, abnormalities. So that's not, you know, a big deal. I see a superhero outfit. Ooh. Ooh. There's some stuff. What's up, Sable? Hey, we got some more patterns. Cool. Anything else is in today? What kind of clothing do you usually like? How would you describe your style? Oh, I bet I know. You're all about, like, a green and white checkered pattern, maybe on an apron. <laughs> Maves, you're doing the thing where you think everyone is you again. Ah! Sable, I love you. Okay, let's buy, let's buy clothing. But I, I find myself lately, um... I can't remember if we have an Argyle vest. Oh, I like, I like some of these, uh, some of the stuff that we've seen, we're seeing right now. Uh, I don't think we have a Corte skirt. A tuxedo dress. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff right now. Oh, yep, that's new. But I think the shoes... Wingtips? Oh, hell yes. But I, I find myself lately looking for a lot of kind of optimal ways to play games. Um, which is a really, I guess, kind of strange and newer thing for me. Um, it's not something I used to do. Can't remember if we have a cat nose, but we're going to get one of those. But I don't, I don't remember previously um, doing that as much. I would play, and I would kind of brute force my way through any given, um, any given level or something like that. But it was never as much I was looking for an optimal way uh, to, to do things. It seems I've done that more over... Um, 
over the past couple of years than I have really anywhere else. Try to get my dog in my lap, and she just... There she goes. Uh, let's see. Blue tweed cap. I have those socks. Okay. But something I've done more lately, and I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. You know? Where I... Where I started doing this. So I'm trying to decide, did that come from, you know... Is that something that I started with, uh... I can't remember if I had the duck beak, but we'll go ahead and pick that up, too. I'm trying to decide, did that start with when I started speedrunning Pokemon? You know, because I, I know that, um, you know, Pokemon Sword... When I did the Pokemon Sword playthrough, I was absolutely using, um... I, you know, I was absolutely, uh, playing it like I would play the Pokemon Let's Go, uh, Eevee speedrun. With lots of X items and such. So, I know that's a case. But, like, I've never really done a lot of games like this where, um... To quote, you know, to quote Mako, um... Employees are a resource. And, you know, you spend your resources to get the results you want. Now, I may have to start playing like that towards the later on, uh, sections of the game... There are absolutely, like, there's a, uh, there's an abnormality I have that you, you, you basically pitch it an employee and it kills the employee and you get energy out of it. Uh, and I've, I, I used it once, learned what it did, and never used it again because it doesn't seem like a good use of employees. Uh, I'm losing too much when I do that. Uh, but, you know, it, it very much has this feeling for me of, um... You know, that's not really an optimal way to play. You, you're you're losing too much for what you're gaining there. Now, if it comes down to I have to, you know, sacrifice an employee in order to survive the day, that's going to be a you know a different uh, a different value proposition naturally, because um, all of a sudden uh, it is very much. Um, optimal to sack, say, one employee in order to pass through the day. But right now, it very much doesn't feel like that's the case. So, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll end up seeing what happens uh, sooner rather than later, I'm sure. I'm going to be streaming again tomorrow, which should be a lot of fun, and just kind of see how far I can get. Um, naturally, we still have to deal with the Magical Girl every day from here on out, so that particular issue is not gonna... It's not gonna vanish on me. Like, I'm gonna have to deal with her for the remainder of the game at this point. But, very much, uh, at the same time, um... I have a potentially working strategy for her. So I think that makes that a little bit less of a of a bad you know thing i kind of know how i want to deal with her i did originally like having this path be just for my house but uh, it makes more sense to have to have this path going up like this okay let's okay so this tree Try to set up. I think I want it to go down. I think I want it to be underneath the path. Because if I have it above the path, I'm not going to be able to see fish when I'm trying to fish there. I mean, we could put it here. How how bad is the how bad is the sight lines when I put it here? Oh, I can't put it there. Okay. Well, let's let's see. Nope, not there. That should do. Okay, this one also has to move. And I think I'm going to move this one across the river. I don't think I need to have this here. So it's very, it's a very interesting thing to kind of look at yourself and go, how, you know, how do I play games? 
Um, you know, the, the fun in a game for me has, you know, it, it's been collecting and 100%ing for a long time. And you guys have seen that uh, for the past number of years that I've been doing this YouTube channel. So that's not really anything different. But a lot of the, you know, a lot of the fun gameplay for me as of late has been how do I, you know, not necessarily perfect the game, but how do I do the best I possibly can? How do I, you know, reach kind of my pinnacle? And I say my pinnacle because, you know, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the fact that there's only so much I can do at the end of the day. This doesn't just apply to video games. This applies to kind of everything in life, and it's, I think it's important uh, if I'm going to be kind of a well-adjusted individual to, to be aware of that. You know, I can only I can only do so much. I can only go so far. You know, there's, there's a limit to what any person can do, and pushing yourself beyond your limit um, probably a losing proposition, you know? It's, it's only going to end in you most likely being upset that, you know, you can't do better than you actually did. Is there a better place to put this tree? Yeah, right here. I like it. You know, pushing, pushing yourself too, too far is, is a hard thing. It, you know, it hurts you, and, you know, there is a, there is a certain bit to be said where, um, you know, pushing yourself is kind of the only way to grow, so, I mean, that's a, that's a legitimate point. You, you should push yourself, and I have, I have said as much in the past that you should push yourself, so I'm not going back on that, but at a certain point, you do need to kind of acknowledge that you have done all that you can. So I know that, you know, with 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 a fighting game, my reflexes are never going to be on par with uh with professional fighting game players. And I know that my uh you know, I'm never going to be able to memorize all of those all those moves because that's just one of my limits. I just can't do that. But in a in a management sim or something like that, I can come up with a strategy that will allow me to to beat the sim, to, to you know, beat the day. I remember to make a fence for Melba. I don't know what what fence should Melba get. It's something I gotta look into. Speaking of Melba, what you doing, Melba? Hi, how's it going? I have a thing for you. Yes, really. You seem like the type of person that would enjoy a rotary phone. I am really giving you a rotary phone. I also like blue. Okay, see you later. Oh yeah, it's uh, you know, it's certainly uh, it's certainly a thing. So now I kind of realize that my uh, you know, my setup in uh, in life is a little bit different, and I'm I'm realizing that you know I have to kind of start playing to that strength. Is B in her house? No. Okay, B's off doing something. But hey, there's Broccolo. What's up, Broccolo? Hey, it's me. Do you want a thing? What am I giving you? I'm giving you a thing. You know what? You'd probably enjoy a throwback skull radio. It is a throwback skull radio. You're exactly right. Well, I got a relay tank. Except I've already had this. Thank you, though. Let's go see. Anything in the woods back here? No? Okay. So we're still looking for B. We haven't seen her yet. So, and we also still need to put... I'm really thinking that I want a bridge, like, right here. It's either that, or it's put it here and straighten out the banks on either side. Gotta build that bridge today, and I just don't know how I want to set it up. But I do definitely appreciate that, uh, you know, the flowers coming in nicely. 
villagers are now wandering up here. So the question is, should that island, that northmost island, that little that little V that I have up there, um, you know, it's inaccessible by any other any other way. You'd have to, you know, go down by way of ladder and uh, or go across by way of um, uh, pole vault. So should that V up there? Should it should it be its own thing? Should I leave it there as kind of a secret hideaway? I have the pyramid on there. We could add other stuff up there that is only for that spot. I don't know. I'm actually very... Oh, actually, that's right. I meant to do this. I'm actually kind of tempted to do that. To just kind of have that be um, its own little thing. Okay, this tree has to move. That is in the way. Do I want the path to wind like this, or do I just want it to go left straight from here? Nah, I kind of like the path winding a little bit. Okay, so the question about this tree. Is this a fruit tree? It is not. Uh, I think that tree is just going to be gone. I think we can. Do, I think we can drop that one. I'm trying to decide if I like. Do I just want to do like this, maybe. No. I like the path to Melba's place coming off, um, coming off the corner like that. Yeah, we're gonna leave that like that. I like that. Okay. So I think we're gonna probably want to put in one more connecting path from, like, this corner on down. So next to Boom's house. And then I think that's going to be it for pathing. Yes, Chatter. You also get a prize. You get a relay tank. That is a relay tank. I am very glad that you like how you look. Good on you, buddy. Oh, hey. Was he here, like, a minute ago? <laughs> Slippers, Komodo Sandos. Oh, hell yes. I am absolutely buying. Give me those Jester shoes. Uh, I would like also to buy the Komodo Sandals. Oh, I'm absolutely buying. Man, I didn't, like... I felt that we passed through here, but... Okay, hold on. We gotta go talk to Peanut. But where will I get lasers? You got a surprise for me? A present? What is it? A T Parka combo. Oh, neat. Also, first of all, Jester shoes. Thank you. And a T Parka combo. Oh, okay. Aw, oh, man, I was hoping the shoes actually jingled a little bit when you walked. Okay, we got the kimono sandals. Let's go ahead and get some slippers. Yeah, I don't know. I think, uh... Maybe it's just how life has changed for me, I guess. In that I, I don't have as much time nowadays to play video games, I say, as I play an hour of Animal Crossing every day, and I also played eight hours of Bodomy Corporation yesterday. But, you know, once upon a time, I had a lot more time to, uh, to play games. And, you know, 
that's changed over the course of uh, the past couple of years. I just I have less and less time. Or maybe it's that I it's, maybe it's not that I have less and less time. Maybe it's that I have more and more that I wish to do with that time. That's probably more more of a realistic statement. So it's kind of like when I do actually have time to play a game, I really want to aim for that. Um, to do everything I can, you know. I think that's probably the realistic thing to say. But I'm trying to aim to be the best I can possibly be. Uh, I think the one we had previously was Arctic Camo. So we'll go ahead and pick up this... Ocean Camo, I guess? Is that what that is? Get the Retro Sports Bag. Alright, we're almost done with kicks. Uh, nope, no, I don't want to. I don't need another one of those. I do want another Traveler's Backpack. Because I like the tan one. I like it a little better than I like the uh, blue one, to be honest. All this money I spent on clothes. My finances. Nope, I have bought you out, buddy. Oh, hello. Oh, Trash Panda Mom was here. Okay. So I'm curious. Let me know has has your uh have your guys' sensibilities changed when it comes to you know I'll say video games because video games is the is the topic of the hour, but um you know we we can also talk about uh do I have KK cruising? I don't think so. I definitely need books. Actually, I need several books. Okay. Only buy order another one, right? Yeah. I'm kind of curious, what can't you buy? I mean, a lot of this stuff looks like you can't buy because it it's crafted. Some of these are things that were specifically given to you. Anything I need another of? Hmm. There's a lot of stuff in here that we've already seen or, or bought. See a lot of pieces of the cube set. I don't remember getting a dartboard. Oh, you actually do throw darts. Interesting. Let's see. Anything? I could get another diner counter table for the kitchen. Hmm. I haven't actually, I haven't actually looked through. Can this be adjusted? No. I haven't actually looked through a lot of these. Just to kind of see what we have access to. There's three different garbage things. Why is that needed? Ugh. Gonna move right the hell on from that. I keep on looking, and I keep on just being surprised, I suppose, by the sheer lack of surfaces. You know? It's something that keeps on, uh... That keeps on dragging my attention. We have lots of stuff. Oh, that's also a tissue box. Okay. There's lots of stuff... But 
not much to put it on. I love that you can see the water actually come out. Hmm. Anything else of interest? I also like that it shows you the uh, the animation for some of these. That's really appreciated. Oh my god, there's so much. Just look how much stuff there is. I remember someone said that they were a little bit upset there were less things in this game than there were in um, some of the previous ones. But you look at this and it's like... Okay, I can only order five total. Okay. Well, that's irritating. There's a... um recipe I've seen for a stone table, and I want that recipe. Twin loves succulents. That's why I had to had to have that somewhere. Who would have a throwback skull? If you have a throwback skull radio... Uh, that you actually use, let me know. I want to know who you are. Just so I know that this type of person exists in real life. I need a utility sink for the basement. I forget if I have one. And a vacuum cleaner. I probably have one, right? And probably a water cooler. I'll have to order some of this stuff. Hmm. I mean, you can make yourself an entire room full of that stuff. Okay. Well. Guess it's going to be it for me. I got very little else to talk about. Thanks for listening. As I said, let me know if you're... If you're... I guess attitude is the, is the word I'd use. If your attitude towards... Um, uh, I guess your hobbies, the words I'd use. Let me know if the, your attitude towards your hobbies has changed. If you... If as you've gotten older, you've changed how you approach them or how you think about them. See, there's the standee. It's the blue one on the right-hand side, and you don't see those things I was talking about at the beginning. Uh, let's talk about structure. I need a bridge. Yeah, I'm curious if you guys, if you guys also see this, or this is one of those things that's, uh, you know, potentially isolated to me. Um, there may, I mean, obviously, I'm one of seven billion people on this on this planet. It's not isolated to me. But if it's something that, like, is not as common, if people do tend to kind of maintain their, their style more than I have. So do let me know. And I've also decided how we're gonna, how we're gonna handle the rivers. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna do two, I'm gonna do two, uh, I'm going to do two bridges. This is going to be the first one. Oh, nope. I can't do that. There's not going to be enough space on this island. Unless I do it across the middle here. So if I... I, I guess we're going to keep on going a little bit. I think. Oh, didn't want that. Nope, didn't 
didn't want that. I'm amazed this fish hasn't been scared off. No, give me, give me the diagonal right here. Thank you. Oh damn it! I don't have a um. Mm, hold on. I need to get my other tools that I completely forgot about. I don't know why this mat. I don't know why this matters to me so much. To to set this up the right way. But I guess it's for the same reason that I'm very carefully walking along my paths and not walking through the flowers. Like. I want my stuff the way I want my stuff. Is, is, is that weird? It's, it's, a, it's a video game. This is not, you know, this is not that, this is not a national thing. This is not that big of a deal. This is, my pockets are full. I mean, this is, this is a video game. This is not a, oh, right, my pockets are full because I have stuff in my pockets. Uh, but this is a video game. This is not a, you know, national event or issue. Also, we didn't uh, do our um, words. I don't have them. I lost them. been talking for 51 minutes and I'm done. Uh, I haven't done my fossils. Let's go do the fossils real quick. Let's also actually grab the freaking tools I came all the way back here for. I mean, this is a, this is a video game. This is not a you know, national emergency. This is not a, this is not a, you know, this is not a huge deal. But yes, it's a video game. And yet, I really want to be careful about how I move around. I guess it's one of those things that, you know, treat it as you would real life. Because, partially because there's no reason not to. I guess. You don't lose anything. You don't lose anything by running over the flowers in this game. The flowers just lose their petals and they get them back the next day. Whereas I'm used to old Animal Crossing that if you ran across flowers, flowers were destroyed. So I suppose it's partly just old, uh... Old thoughts kicking in. Anything in here you need? Nope. You have everything. Okay. Yeah, I think I like the idea of having two bridges up there, just kind of spanning it. It makes it... Mentally, it makes the, the, the village seem a little bit less hurried. And I know that's a very weird thing to say, because it's just... You know, they're just bridges. But I feel like having this meandering kind of path is uh, is a little bit more relaxed. You know, having it go up and around as opposed to straight down, I feel like that has a little bit more of a relaxed kind of feel. Uh, I didn't actually want that one. I wanted this one. Oh, damn it. That's fine. There we go. No. Bad. Also bad. Okay. Can I put the bridge kit here? Yep. That's it. That's exactly where I wanted to go. So I think having this meandering path, it kind of gives a little bit more of this feeling of uh, of relaxation. It's not in such a hurry to go over. And I also, I kind of like the idea of not having a bridge at the top of the falls. Um, I may yet do a bridge at the bottom of the falls. I haven't decided. Kind of all this money that could have gone towards towards upgrading my house. <laughs> or not upgrading, because we're I think we're done upgrading, but all of this money that could have gone towards paying off my house, we have put into bridges and ramps. So we'll put the, the next one we'll put like right here, maybe. No, or maybe right here. I think actually right here is uh 
probably what I'll do. Let's go ahead and set that up right now while I'm thinking about it. So I know where my, my next spot is. I'm assuming that's considered to be a straight line. Right. Okay, so that's this side. And I can't tell if the other side is done already. I do want to come in, like, right here, though. So I probably need to fix this. Nope. So I'll have to move some of these flowers, but that's that's fine. I'm not really worried about moving some of those flowers. Okay, so we'll put another um, we'll put another thing there, and then, like I said, I'm what I'm trying to decide to do, if I want to do, is down here put a bridge. And I think I'm going to. I think I like that idea. And that'll just kind of give us bridges everywhere. The entire the entire city uh, city. The entire town will be connected in a nice way. And then we'll put some paths in and that will be all the infrastructure we will need. And then we'll be able to kind of wash our hands of that and then it's up to decoration. So the other question then comes, how do we build a path? To that bridge. I'm thinking like this. But I think that's going to be something that I will do on my own time. I don't really think that's something you guys need to worry about. I am kind of thinking about making the path up top there to the um, to the hot spring. I'm kind of thinking about making that a wood path as opposed to a stone path. I think that would fit better. Okay, we're going to have to angle down. I have to move a bunch of these flowers. kind of getting the layout done, and once I kind of know what the layout is, I can uh, go in and replace things and move things around a little bit. One thing I wish I had, and I might end up doing, I just got to figure out where I'm going to do it, is to have a small canyon somewhere. doesn't need to be a big thing, but like, you know, a, uh, make one of these paths go through um, just a small area of, uh, like, raised on both sides. I think I might do that for this path, and I might do that, like, back here. Just raise right here, just for fun. Or maybe back here. Maybe have this section right here raised. It just seems like a, like a neat thing to have. And I also haven't seen many other, or maybe even any other, uh, 
hounds do that specifically. Can I put one right here? Nope. So that will have to do. That is this bath. Okay. Well, now you guys have an idea of what that layout's going to look like. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.